I am of the NES generation, or actually more like the Super Nintendo generation. I was born in 86, raised in the 90s, and the NES and the Super Nintendo were definitely two platforms that my generation grew up with. I have fond memories of the sounds of that generation. In particular, the Super Nintendo has a very unique sound to it, especially because it used a sampler instead of a synthesizer. We'll go into that a little bit more in a little bit, but there is one game in particular that I absolutely loved. It was the first video game soundtrack I ever purchased. I remember seeing it at a comic book store for 40 bucks in like 2005, and I said, I have to have that. I want this soundtrack. It is Chrono Trigger. The music of Chrono Trigger is amazing. The game is phenomenal. It has always been one of my all-time favorite video games. And today, I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. Out of my comfort zone, we are going to create a track that is not only inspired by Chrono Trigger, but uses the same sounds of Chrono Trigger. We are going to try and tap into that classic Super Nintendo sound and recreate it right here. Let's hop in, create some instruments, create a song, and see what happens. We're gonna experiment with a few things. And there's a few things that, uh, that we have to do. First, you have to understand the way that the Super Nintendo creates sound. So going back to the NES, the Nintendo, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, or Famicom, as it was known in Japan, they used an FM synthesizer. The Super Nintendo was completely different. The Super Nintendo used what is called a sampler. It takes a recording and makes it programmable. Here they've taken three cellists and they've put microphones up and they have asked these three cellists to play each note one at a time. And then the programmers will take it and program it into the keyboard so that, you know, by the time we get it here on our end, you can actually sit down and uh, and play it, and that right there, that's actually a cello playing. That is the more complex side of sampling. Super Nintendo did not go that crazy. What the Super Nintendo did was take very, very, very short samples, and they found ways to make that work to their advantage. The reason why they had short samples, I'm talking like one second, like may maybe a second of a trumpet playing or a second of a piano playing. They did not have much room to work on, on those cartridges. There was only a very tiny amount of space that was set aside for sound and music. And so they had to use that and create these tiny little samples and then do things with it to make it work. So what we are going to do today, we are going to use Logic's built-in instruments because eh, they're not as good of a quality as east west you know they're they're pretty stock and they're they're good enough for somebody who wants to just leap into music but uh if you really want a good deep sound you're gonna need some higher quality samples but today we just need something that's okay so all i got from that is that it's the same as what you do but different <laughs> We've got to set up our palette. So we are actually going to be creating a palette of instruments, and then we'll start to create something with that palette. And so let's start with a key with a, uh, a piano. Does not sound very Super Nintendo. It doesn't. It sounds too realistic. What we're going to do, we're going to come into our sampler, and there's... Yeah, and there's the diminish right there. There you go. So what we've got here is we have taken the size of the sample, we've shrunk it because there's not enough space in the Super Nintendo cartridge for that entire sample. So what if we took that to, there's 40 milliseconds. That's a little harsh. It's usually right around 200 to 500. Let's, let's, let's do in the 500. There we go. I'm happy with that for now. So with that, we are going to add an echo. And to get that echo, we are going to use a tape delay. Now this, this is where things are gonna get really interesting because this is where we start to hear sounds that you might associate with Chrono Trigger or Link to the Past. Most Super Nintendo systems, they had 
a delay that they would use that would uh, go in 16 millisecond increments all the way up to about 240 milliseconds. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our delay. It's set to 500 milliseconds. That's a little on the harsh side. Let's move that down to, let's just say 180. So is that sounding? We're starting to get a little bit of a Super Nintendo sound here. I'm going to add a bit crusher, which is going to downsample our sound. Okay, I like that. Okay, I like that piano, okay. I found some settings I like. Let's move on to the next one, let's get a harp. Okay, so now our harp. We need to change. Okay, it's a nice quick release. Add the tape delay. I like that. Something that's going to be interesting and I have got to figure out is going to be a violin. Actually, it's not that bad. We've got strings, we've got a harp, we have piano. We need timpani. That sounds rough. I might actually need to bring this out because we can bring this out to 500 sounds a little bit better. Also, let's adjust this tape delay. Woodwinds, flute solo, legato. I mean, they got legato and staccato there. Yes, it sounds pretty bad, but then we had the tape delay. I like that. The last thing we need to do is to add a bass. Okay, I like the sound of that. All right, now let's actually make something with all these instruments. One of my favorite tracks has always been Wind, wind Scene. I'm gonna use that as our reference point and we're gonna create a nice moving scene that could be used as, you know, landscape or overworld. This is used as an overworld theme. We're gonna start with a harp. Also, we have to keep in mind, there can only be six things preferably, so I have my notes here, six instruments preferably playing at the same time, a maximum of eight. And the reason for that is Generally, you would have six tracks dedicated to music, two tracks dedicated to sound effects. You could have a total of eight things playing at the same time. Let's just throw a flute on here. I rather like that. I'm thinking of modulating here instead of sticking with what I had. I'm hearing something in my head. It was the F. It was the easiest chord there, and I couldn't get it. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. All right. Let's see if we can get some bass, because I want some bass in here. All right. And we've got the bass quantized to 16th notes. Okay. 
ooh, 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 ooh. we gotta be careful, gotta be careful. We can't do, you can't do full chords. Because then we have multiple things playing. That might give a neat little sound. Let me, let's play that really quickly. Okay. I like what we have so far. Now we need to add a second part. We need a B section on this track where we're basically going to take what we did and probably take it to the strings. I kind of like doing that. Let's just re uh, copy over the harp and the bass here. So we'll copy that over. Actually, we could easily just take this flute part and bring it up to here. Let's see what that sound like. Okay, but let's oh, but, 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 let's take these trills out or the, these uh yeah let's take these out so we've got a nice solid note. Now, do we want to add a counter melody in the flute? I like that. I think that's going to finish it off. This is our very first Super Nintendo track. Here we go. Well, there we go. I am actually quite pleased with how this turned out. It's, it ended up being a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. I did the research. I found out what I needed to do to get that nice Super Nintendo sound, but it took a lot of tweaking, as you saw, and maybe as you didn't see, because a lot of it got cut out. But I would say over half of the time I spent making this piece, I spent actually creating the instruments, but it does give me a good palette of instruments to use in the future, and you better believe we are going to be returning to this sound. Anyway, if you like what you saw, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. It really helps us grow the channel. And if you want to see me do this live, hop over to my Twitch channel. I live stream these every Wednesday afternoon. If you want to come by, drop in the chat and say hi, feel free to do so. I always love to talk while I work. That's it for today. You guys take care and I will see you on the next one.